We're going to start now with our Middle East current events, and it, it's not going to be a long one. I, I believe that you already know that um, you already know that um, there has been several things that happened in the Middle East in the last few days, uh, as well as in America and in North Korea. The North Korean just launched a failed attempt uh, to fire short-range missiles, and they fell in the on the sea, not too far from Japan, but the reports that we have, the intelligence reports that we have, is that it was a failed um, launch. So they're still testing missiles and they're still doing what they know to do the best is to provoke the, uh, the, uh, the, the nations of the world. Again, I always put the North Koreans as the rumors of wars, part of what Jesus said that will characterize the end times. Of course, in America, the um, um, the hurricane that just hit uh, um, uh, the coast of Texas, thank God, is now down to um, to level one, and um, a lot of people. I, I've seen a lot of people attaching that to the fact that the Jared Kushner is in Israel right now, trying to push peace. I would be very careful doing that linkage because a nothing that. Kushner is doing now is different than what he did two weeks ago or what the previous administration did um, a year ago or two years ago. It's the same formula uh, that is doomed to fail. Uh, it's not going to happen because the basic components are there on the table. And they're, of course, uh, um, you know, when you don't talk about Jerusalem, when you don't talk about borders, when you don't talk about the return of, of, of refugees, then, then you're pushing the explosion to a later time. And, um, and this is why I believe it has nothing to do with that. In fact, this administration is not pushing Israel. And in fact, this administration is the first one who is not chanting the mantra to state solution because they understand it's probably not going to happen in the near future. So I wouldn't make that linkage. Um, but what I do want you to know is that there's a new chief to the Iranian army that was sworn in just a few days ago. And it's not a new thing that we hear, but it's, uh, it's being repeated now. Um, we know that the former president and the religious leader of, of Iran said that many times. They say that Israel won't exist in about 25 years. So, let me tell you something. The Bible says that Israel not only will exist in 25 years, Israel will never be utterly destroyed and forgotten. And if anything, I suggest that the, the Iranians will read the book of Ezekiel in chapter 38 and 39 and understand what is going to happen to Persia as a result of their attack on Israel they will be defeated and destroyed. But in order for them to defeat, to be defeated, we need a war. In order for a war, we need a reason. And then, of course, that's the reason why Benjamin Netanyahu um, um, earlier th this week took the plane and flew to Sochi on the, on the Black Sea, the, the, the resort town in Russia, and met with Vladimir Putin on uh, secret intel on Iran's threat. Now, you have to understand something, and it, it has to be very, very clearly um, explained. Um, for the first time in many, many years, Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as other cabinet ministers, are using the phrase regional war. Regional war. And, and by the way, if Ezekiel is anything, it's a regional war. <laughs> but what, what they say is that we are warning all of you right now that what Iran is doing in Syria, building up their military bases and military power, is about to lead to a regional war. And we reserve the rights not to be spectators on the uh, sidelines, but to... Uh, do something to uh, put an end to it. Now, so far, the the only good thing that happened between, uh, as a result of meetings between Netanyahu and Putin is the fact that there were meetings. What am I trying to say? Whenever we have communication 
then the lower level people understand these leaders talk so we cannot really act in a crazy manner and these people know each other they respect each other they talk to each other they meet each other they sit and, and discuss things so uh, we must be very careful with them and so far over the last few years Israel has an understanding unwritten understanding with the Russians that we will not stand on their way to do whatever they want in Syria as long as they don't stand on our way to do whatever we need to prevent Hezbollah from being armed by Iran and North Korea. But now comes the big problem. So far, Iran was busy in sending troops to help Assad survive. The last few months, with the diminishing of ISIS, and ISIS is really losing grounds in northern Iraq and in Syria, almost by the hour, we see that basically the Sunni rebels are defeated and the Shiite coalition of the Syrian army, Iraqi army, and the Iranian army is actually winning here in this whole battle. It's a big blow to the Israelis, of course, who all obviously wanted uh, the, the, the Sunnis to win and they, they don't want any Iranian soldiers beyond our border. But of course, we also don't like ISIS. And beyond that, the politicians in Israel or even the generals in Israel are not fully aware of Bible prophecy. See, Bible prophecy speaks of the things that will happen. Politicians speaks of the things that they hope will happen. They want to happen. But this Bible, this book tells us what will happen See, I always teach people that um, in the world, we have two different tracks. They're, they're parallel tracks. One is the will of God. Uh, one is the, 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 you know, the plan for your life. And the other one is the plan for the whole world. The plan for your life depends on your decision to follow Christ or not. And if, if you follow him, then that will affect where you will be when world events are going to take place. Now, world events have been determined already. God is all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's everywhere, but He's all-knowing God. Unlike Satan, who has a very limited understanding of the future, God knows everything, and God knows exactly what the decisions of the Russians, the Iranians, the Turks, the Sudanese, and uh, the um, Libyans are going to be. God knows how much they will contemplate uh, of uh, attacking Israel and eventually bring it to pass once something drastic and, and important is going to happen. Now, Israel, for the first time, is telling the world we will not live with Iranian presence in Syria. Now, we, we managed to deal with Hezbollah, who is the proxy of Iran, from Lebanon because they're a terrorist organization and the Russians in a way have a sick silent agreement with us we can do whatever we want with Hezbollah but the Russians and the Iranians are allies right now the Russians are interested in making and cutting deals with the Iranians right now the Russians will not allow us to do to the Iranians what they allow us to do to the Hezbollah their proxies and this is where, why Benjamin Netanyahu had to travel to Sochi. It's not the first time he's meeting with the Russian president. A few months ago, he did the same, speaking about the same things. And the reason why he had to go back there right now, it's because the Russians do nothing. They turn blind eye to the expansion of the Iranians. And they're allowing Iran to do whatever Iran wants to do. Maybe they will just do some cosmetic Cosmetic things of uh, with some pulling them 20 miles further away from Israel, but that's when you talk about missiles, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. Um, but my point is this I see that the attempt of Israel to push the Iranians away will cause the Iranians to actually be around Damascus, in Damascus, helping Assad to survive and stay in power. And again and again and again, I've been telling you that for so long, I believe that there is a good chance that the Israeli attack 
on Damascus, probably to eliminate the Iranian threat, might lead the Russians, the Iranians, and the rest to have the famous regional war of Gog and Magog from Ezekiel. So I, I look at the developments right now with great interest, and I, I advise that all of us will keep an eye on what is going on. Sometimes it's good to read between the lines, because when Netanyahu travels, he always speaks on Facebook, by the way, to the people of Israel, before, during, and after his visit. And what he tells us is what he wants us to understand, because the Russians could care less whether the Iranians are in Syria or not. It's the Israelis who should care more, and who are concerned about it. And to us, he is ensuring us that we're not going to be spectators from the sidelines. We're going to do whatever we need to do to eliminate that, that threat. Now, so far, by the way, the understandings between us and the Russians allowed us to operate freely in the skies of Syria to eliminate any threat coming. But it was the threats that are coming from the side of Hezbollah. The Russians are speaking completely differently when it comes to Iran. And, and, and this is the, the biggest concern that we have right now. So, you know, while the world was looking at the sun eclipse, we were looking at the, the expansion of the Iranians beyond the border. We're, we're not, you know, concerned about all the other things. Um, just so you know, um, you know, I've been, I've been asked so many times by so many people, about the um, September 23rd uh, event. And, and let's go back also to the sun eclipse. The sun eclipse happened a few years ago and in, in the late 60s, and uh, it, it happened again. And sun eclipses happen not only in America, but also around the world. And, and, and again, you, you have to understand something. I have nothing against signs um, at, at all, actually. Uh, but I do believe with all of my heart that the sun and the stars are giving signs, but the signs are to cause the non-believers to understand. You see, we as believers, let me under explain something. We as believers will eventually enter into the new Jerusalem. And... There will be no need for any signs, and there will be no sun, no moon, and no stars over there. Until that moment, we need to get the attention of the non-believers. Just like the sign was given to Israel that a, a virgin shall conceive, it is for Israel, the non-believing Israel. Look, a virgin shall conceive. Did they believe? No. The three eastern kings who looked at the star and followed him, they were non-believers. These are not believers, but they followed the star, and then, then they saw the newborn king, and they bowed down before him. But the idea that I'm trying to say is that, A, a sign has to be visible to all people, not through NASA and computer screens, and B, it has to do with prophecies given regarding specific events. Now, people are telling me Revelation 12 is a specific event. But, hey, in Revelation 12, there's two signs, not one. How come everybody talks about one and neglect the other? Read Revelation 12 carefully and see for yourself. First of all, that constellation of the stars that NASA reported that is going to happen lacks several ingredients. And what it will be, it's something that happened several times before. Two, for the most part, most people will not be able to see the constellation but through computer screens. And not, you know, they won't be able to see it. So uh, my, my, my point is, in, for us the believers who knows, who understand the times and the seasons in which we live, the followers of Jesus asked him for the signs of the end of the age, and he gave them a detailed list of the signs of the end, and when is he going to come. And that list is for us, the believers, to follow. The list 
is in Matthew 24 and in Luke 21. It is details about wars and rumors of wars and famines and pestilences and earthquakes and about Israel coming back to the land as the fig tree is blooming. These are the things that are to happen. And that's what makes me excited because we see them. Everybody can see them. You don't need a computer screen and you don't need a report from NASA or you don't need any astronomers. Or you don't need all of that. And another problem that I have is this has gone beyond control. People are so into that September thing that they become violent verbally and they attack people. It becomes a point of strife and anger. And I don't understand why we choose to always fight over something when these are the last days, this is the last hour, and we need to be more than ever before loving each other. And by this, the world will know that we are his disciples. So we have all the signs that Jesus told us to look for, and, and, and we have to stick to them. We know he's about to return. All those signs are telling us we have to live every single day of our life right now as if he's about to come and take us out of here. So I, I want to urge you to not look up at the stars, <laughs> lift up your head. People tell me, why does it say lift up your head? Jesus even lifted up his head, looking up to the Father. Isaiah talked about looking up. Jesus looked up. The disciples look up. We look up not at the stars. We look up where the Lord is. And we look up to where the Lord is because He's about to come back. So we lift up our eyes because that's where He's going to come back from. That's what we need to look for. That's what we need to stick on. You know, to, and and, and we, we really need to be very careful not to make those things a point of strife and, and a mess between us. And, and, and again, I, I, I don't want to mock anyone, but I can tell you on September 24th, we can have coffee. And you will see that nothing is going to happen. Why? Why am I saying that? Because every single report that I read, and I read hundreds of them, is rounding the edges and playing with some, with some numbers and days. I mean, people talk about from the eclipse to the September, there's 40 days. There's not 40 days. There's 34 days. And people talk about the days of, of the Feast of Trump, Trumpet, well, this is at the end of the Feast of Trumpet. It's not the beginning. And, 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 and not only that, if the Bible tells us that no one knows, not even the Son, why do we insist that we need to know and we want to know the day? The reason why the Bible tells us that we should not know the day and the hour is so we will be ready at any given moment. And, and that is why I'm telling you, Live as if today is your last day when it comes to the expectation for his return and live as if you have 300 more years when it comes to how you plan your, your, your things. You know, a lot of people were taken by those charlatans who, who wrote books about the blood moons and others and they started selling all their portfolios and selling all those things and quitting their jobs and then they were left with nothing in their hands. So on one hand, we, I mean, we have to be uh, you know, very, very wise and innocent as a dove and wise as, as, as a serpent. So we have to be very, very careful in the way we do things. But the bottom line is, let us look up and we have to remember our redemption indeed is going near. I'm going to be traveling in less than a week to the United Kingdom and, uh, and spend the weekend there. And uh, I'm very excited we're going to have a prophecy conference. I'm going to do TV and radio, and we're going to, I'm going to speak in two different places beyond that. Um, then, when I, once I'm back, I will do a Skype uh, um, message uh, with Calvary Chapel Appleton uh, in their um, prophecy conference called The Spirit and the Bride Say Come, which is what I've been saying for so long from Revelation. So it's a 2017 Calvary Chapel Appleton Prophecy Conference. You can find it on our website. I'm not going to be there physically. I'll be in Israel leading a tour. But I'll be, it's 9 p.m. Israel time, and I'll be on Skype for about an hour. So we spoke about September 23rd. I told you what I know. I told you what I believe. 
let's not go deeper into it let's let's relax um, and again if it happens today praise the Lord if it happens tomorrow praise the Lord if it happens on the 23rd praise the Lord I'm not against it but I can tell you if it's not happening on the 23rd let's not always pull out a new rabbit out of the hat of dates and let's just remember we need uh, to be ready at all times I'm going to be speaking on October 7th in the uh, Olive Tree Ministries uh, Conference, Understanding the Times in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. I'm going to be giving two messages. One, where is America in Bible prophecy? And the Lord really gave me a message about the United States. Funny, it's from the book of um, Jeremiah. So um, we're going to talk about America in Bible prophecy. We I'm going to give a short introduction in the beginning of the message about what what prophecy is normally about and how come America is important to those who live in the 20th and the 21st century when we understand Bible prophecy. So we're going to deal with that and then I will give the f- chapter 2 of my message on Europe. Europe closer to the Antichrist and I I spoke there last time in that conference that was the last message of the conference it was Europe ready for the Antichrist it's how Europe is getting ready and we're gonna we're gonna try and see what happened in the past year and how it is closer and um, just briefly just so you understand um, I'm not gonna give you the whole message right now by the way it's not even ready yet I'm going to be working on this message in Europe, in the middle of Europe, because this is where I, I can see and feel and understand how close they are. And that's exactly what happened last time also. But I do want you to understand that Babylon fell and couldn't rise up at the time of, you know, at the time of Jeremiah. He prophesied that there will fall. But Babylon continued in the scriptures. And you can see that all the way to Revelation. So Babylon moved. The spirit of Babylon, the role of Babylon, the entire context of what Babylon was, is, and will be, started moving geographically with the same spirit to different parts of the world. And eventually, as I will explain, will stop in Europe. And in Europe, it will produce eventually the Antichrist. So... We're going to deal with that there. Once I'm in England, uh, I will also speak on Armageddon and also on the Tribulation. These are two, diff- two different topics. Of course, Armageddon is the last phase of the Tribulation. But we're going to talk about the Tribulation itself. What are the names of the Tribulation? When will the Tribulation begin? What is the length of the Tribulation? Um, what is it from a Jewish perspective? Who is in the center of... of of, of the events during the tribulation. What is God going to do to give the gospel to the people during the tribulation? Who is he going to use? What for? How? When? All of those questions will be answered. And of course, when it comes to Armageddon, we have to remember that um, it is a phrase that is in the Revelation 16.16, 16, but it's taken from a Hebrew name, Megiddo, Har Megiddo. Uh, we're going to try and understand why it uses that name. When will Armageddon take place? Why is it so different from what the rest of the events of the Valley of Megiddo were, was? And where necessarily Armageddon is going to be? It's not necessarily in Megiddo. You can see why. And why do we even have Armageddon? What is it? And, and um, who is going to be putting an end to it? How? There's a lot of things to talk about. So, so these are the two topics I will share in England apart you know, from what I'm working on for the Eden Prairie thing. So that, is, that was a short update on what is going on right now and what is uh, going to happen when, with, with, with the ministry as far as my traveling and the messages that I'm working on and I'm going to be sharing. So that's it.